Bungarus, Wikipedia article audio. Bungarus is a genus of venomous elipid snakes, the krites, found in South and Southeast Asia. There are 15 species in the genus Bungarus. Krites are found in the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia. Distribution Description Krites usually range between 1 and 1.5 m in length, although specimens as large as 2 m have been observed. The banded krite may grow as large as 2.125 m. Most species of krites are covered in smooth, glossy scales arranged in bold, striped patterns of alternating black and light colored areas. This may serve as aposematic coloration in its habitat of grassland and scrub jungle. The scales along the dorsal ridge of the back are hexagonal. The head is slender and the eyes have round pupils. Krites have pronounced dorsolateral flattening, which causes them to be triangular in cross-section. The tail tapers to a thin point. Krites are ophiophagous preying primarily upon other snakes and are cannibalistic, feeding on other krites. They will also eat mice and small lizards. All krites are nocturnal. They are more docile during the daylight hours, at night, they become very active, but are not very aggressive even when provoked. They are actually rather timid and will often hide their heads within their coiled bodies for protection. When in this posture, they will sometimes whip their tails around as a type of distraction. Krites are oviparous, and the female will lay a clutch of 12 to 14 eggs in piles of leaf litter, and stay with them until they hatch. Bungarus contains some species which are among the most venomous land snakes in the world to mice based on their LD50. They have highly potent neurotoxic venom which can induce muscle paralysis. Clinically, their venom contains mostly presynaptic neurotoxins. These affect the ability of neuron endings to properly release the chemical that sends the message to the next neuron. Following envenomation with bungarotoxins, transmitter release is initially blocked, followed by a period of massive overexcitation, which finally tails off to paralysis. These phases may not be seen in all parts of the body at the same time. Since krites are nocturnal, they seldom encounter humans during daylight hours, so bites are rare but a bite from a krite is potentially life-threatening, and should be regarded as a medical emergency. Diet and Behavior Typically, victims start to complain of severe abdominal cramps accompanied by progressive muscular paralysis, frequently starting with ptosis. As there are no local symptoms, a patient should be carefully observed for telltale signs of paralysis and treated urgently with anti-venom. Frequently, little or no pain occurs at the site of a krite bite, which can provide false reassurance to the victim. The major medical difficulty of envenomated patients are the lack of medical resources and the ineffectiveness of the anti-venom. Once at a healthcare facility, support must be provided until the venom is metabolized and the victim can breathe unaided especially if no species-specific antivenom is available. Given that the toxins alter acetylcholine transmission which causes the paralysis, some patients have been successfully treated with cholinesterase inhibitors, such as physostigmine or neostigmine, but success is variable and may be species-dependent, as well. If death occurs, it typically takes place about 6 to 12 hours after the krite bite, but can be significantly delayed. Cause of death is usually respiratory failure suffocation by complete paralysis of the diaphragm. Even if patients make it to a hospital, subsequent permanent coma and even brain death from hypoxia may occur, 
given the potentially long transport times to get medical care. Reproduction Mortality rates caused by bites from the members of this genus vary from species to species, according to University of Adelaide Department of Toxicology, bites from the banded krite have an untreated mortality rate of 110%, while those of the common krite are 70-80%. Several websites state the mortality rate is 50% even with treatment but no specific species is mentioned and no original source in the medical literature for this statement is given. In common with those of all other venomous snakes, the death time and fatality rate resulting from bites of krites depend on numerous factors, such as the venom yield and the health status of the victim. Polyvalent elipid antivenom is effective in neutralizing of the venoms of B. candidus and B. flaviceps and rather effective for B. fasciatus. In this last case, the monovalent B. fasciatus antivenom is also moderately effective. Asterisk not including the nominate subspecies, T type species. Venom Krites have a reputation as deadly snakes and have figured in fiction as such. Species Root Yard Kipling used a small sand-colored krite as one of the three main villains in his short story Ricky Tiki Tavi. In another Kipling short story, The Return of Imre, a servant arrested for murder cheats the rope by stepping on a krite. In fiction Roald Dahl uses the krite as a device in his short story Poison. A version of Poison is shown in Alfred Hitchcock Presents October 5, 1958 and remade in Tales of the Unexpected March 29, 1980. The deadly snake in the Sherlock Holmes story The Adventure of the Speckled Band may have been a krite, although it is described in that work as an Indian swamp adder. The Russell's Viper has also been considered as a possible culprit. In James Patterson's The Eighth Confession, krites are the murder weapons used by a serial killer. In Michael Crichton's Micro, a banded krite appears in captivity and is used in an attempt to kill one of the main characters. In the Hooded Hawk mystery from the Hardy Boys mystery series Frank and Joe Hardy, Chet Morton and Ahmed the rug dealer from Bayport find a banded krite in the woods next to the Morton farm. Locked-in Syndrome 